Folks, this is Terry Rahm and Don Bell here. We're down in Southwest Texas, and they're on a morning turkey hunt. I'm running one camera, Wes Morgan's running another one, and we're trying to uh, to get Don in on his first Rio Grande turkey call. Now, Terry Rahm's won the National Turkey Calling Contest, the Pennsylvania State, all kind of turkey calling contests. But the good thing about Terry Rahm is he's a great turkey hunter. It takes a, a lot besides calling to be a great turkey hunter. What you have to do is learn the lay of the land and become a good woodsman and figure out where a turkey wants to come to. And this is one thing that Terry is probably one of the best young people in the country at. I started hunting with Terry Rahm when he was 18 years old. And if you notice there, he's telling Don where he thinks the turkey's going to come from, how he's going to come. And when Terry was 18, he went to work uh, for me down in Coffeville, Alabama, doing seminars and clinics. And the first five years we hunted together, we called in 165 turkeys for other folks to shoot. And we've had a lot of fun around the country. And each encounter you have with a turkey is going to be a different encounter because no two of them act exactly alike. And if you notice Don there, he's putting on the camouflage mask and everything. And Terry's giving him a few tips on uh, what to do and what to expect on it. And as Terry begins calling, he's using a blackwood or turkey call. This is a single reed cut reed that's real raspy. And, you know, there are all kind of diaphragm calls that we make. We make... Uh, one reed, two reed, three reed, four reeds. We make a one and a half cut call, a two and a half, a three and a half cut call. And these cut calls don't do nothing but sound raspy when you start calling. You'll listen to Terry, you'll hear what I'm talking about here. As he begins calling, because there's a turkey been gobbling up here on the ridge, you can see in the far distance. And uh, Terry starts calling to him with just a bunch of just plain old hen yips and a few cuts along. And, and Don's sitting there, and he's sitting beside him because there's an opening in front of him where you can kill a turkey. You just don't sit down any place. You see the turkey up on the side of the hill there that they've been listening to gobble. Now, he's 250 yards away, and he's in a full strut coming down through this thick brush here. One thing about South Texas, it's uh, it's all bad country. If you sit down beside it, it's going to stick you or anything else. I mean, it's just, everything down there got a sticker on it. If it don't stick you or bite you, you're in trouble. Uh, Terry's figured out which way the turkey's coming by the way he's walking and how he's gobbling. He listens to him, and the old turkey just uh, starts strutting on down the side of the ridge there. He's coming on down. He's walking fast, if you notice. Sir. That's the way a turkey is. Sometimes they'll come to you so fast it'll scare you, and sometimes they seem like they take all day. In fact, I've sat down and called a turkey at daylight, and uh, it would be uh, uh, 12 o'clock before I actually shot the turkey, and I never moved out of the place I was sitting because he kept on drumming in front of me or gobbling let me know he was there and uh as a turkey gobbles and comes on in here terry gets the feel of how hot the turkey is and how well he wants to come in he's telling don here if you notice he's motioning for him because i'm running the camera standing right directly behind him wes is off to my right he's telling don that he's gonna have to get up and move a little bit to the left if he's gonna get a shot at the turkey because the turkey is circling and coming around to the left there and uh, Don gets up there and just sort of hunkers down the bushes. A lot of people don't realize I shoot a lot of turkeys from a standing position. Uh, I just uh, hunker down behind some bushes or get behind a big tree and use it to, to use it as a blind or a silhouette, you know, to break out my silhouette to where the turkey can't see me. Notice old turkey's white head. That's one thing you can always tell about a turkey. It's either going to be white or red or got some blue on it. Them three colors are three colors you don't want to ever wear when you go hunting in the woods for turkeys because other people will mistake you for a turkey. And we got a great sport here in turkey hunting, but more people are shot turkey hunting than any other sport in the country. So be sure when you go turkey hunting, never wear red, white, or blue while you're out there hunting. And people today call lots better than turkeys do. Terry Rahm uh, beat any turkey in the world when it comes to actually down to turkey calling, and that's what you got to do. If you notice Don here, all you can see is his head and eyes sticking up there above the bushes. And the old turkey finally struts on around and finally walks out of cow trail about 40 yards away. And just as soon as I get the camera focused on him, I tell him to shoot him. Y'all will hear me tell him to shoot him here, and we'll see what's going to happen right after he shoots. cedar bushes and Don's running to him as hard as he can go because this is his first Rio Grand turkey and he'll go hunting a long time in his life before he'll ever kill another turkey like this and I want you folks to watch what's going to conspire here as he comes on Terry jumps up and starts on over there towards him you know he's tickled to death for him too Don totes the old big turkey out here but this is a, a once what I call a once in a lifetime turkey in my lifetime I've killed probably 25 or 30 turkeys that had double beards 
I've killed eight or ten that had three beards, but I've never killed a turkey with more than three beards. I've seen one with five beards and one with six beards in my life, but I've never seen uh, uh, a turkey killed on a hunt with me that had over three beards. And this one here is something real uh, unbelievable about the old turkey's four or five years old. As you can see, he's got about an inch and an eighth spur there. He's a real old turkey. and But the unique thing about him is his beard. You know, the National Wild Turkey Federation keeps records of these things, and if any of you are not a member of the National Wild Turkey Federation, y'all need to call them or write Edgefield, South Carolina, and uh, join the organization because it'll teach you a lot about wild turkeys, wild turkey management, and what's happening around the country in turkeys today because there's more turkeys here today uh, than there was when Columbus got over here, and there's more white-tailed deer uh, than there ever has been before. So the two organizations as a sportsman you should belong to one of them's the NRA, the National Rifle Association, and the other one is, now look at the Gomer Pyle look. There old Don throwed his head up there shining for the cameras, you know, because he feels pretty proud about killing a turkey with four beards, and I would too if I ever kill one. But this has been an exciting hunt, and I hope you folks enjoyed the, the scene there and the turkey coming in, and I hope you learned a little bit about sitting down and not being scared to get up and move. When you know the turkey's moving right or left, get up and get a new position to where when he comes in, you can kill him. So practice hunter safety and get out there and go after a gobbler next spring. This is just a good site for a hen turkey to be out in the nest next to it because little turkeys have to have grasshoppers or insects to survive. 90% of their diet is insects. So clear cuts, open pastures and fields, that's where you're going to find turkeys in the springtime. I don't know if you heard that or not, but I was blowing a new owl call that we got. You blow through, and it really squalls good, and turkeys really love to gobble to it. And if you heard the old turkey there, he gobbled way off. You'll see me and Terry as we get a little closer, and we, uh, we blow the call again to try to locate where he's at. I'm not sure where he was. I'll blow it and let's see. All right. I couldn't hear him. I couldn't hear him. He was right down there, right off the point of that other ridge going down there. Well, you get right up there beside that whole big tree there. It's got that little tree going where you can stay in there. That big cherry tree. Well, if you know me then, then I told Terry tree I tree couldn't hear the turkey yeah. gobble. When you're owl hooting or blowing, or blowing a turkey call or blowing a crow call and you're blowing it real loud trying to locate a turkey, and that turkey cuts your call, he gobbles while you're calling, you won't hear a lot of them. So a lot of times, I call it short yipping to them or short owl calling. Instead of making the whole owl call, I'll just go, hoo, 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 hoo. I won't finish the owl call. Or if I'm using a turkey call, I'll just go <coughs> and cut it off. And when I do this, I catch the turkey while he's gobbling. So once I call a couple of times normally, then I do that. And let's watch Terry here as he puts a call in his mouth and does a little calling. If you notice, Terry got it behind a great big old tree there. Something to block any of his movement or anything. Something he can just peek around. Turkey hunting with a bow is a peekaboo situation. You want to be able to where that you're blocked to where when that turkey comes out, you've got some bushes in front of him. The place that we picked out here in front of Terry is real thick except for a couple openings he can shoot through. It's got a lot of greenery in front of him. It's got a big old blowed down tree that the turkey's got to walk around and be within 15 yards. Notice that hole down through there. That's a shooting lane, one on the other side. But in this shooting lane here, Terry can't shoot because of all them green bushes there. But you can see that little hole. You gotta have you some shooting windows to be successful turkey. And this old turkey here uh, comes walking on up through here. And uh, uh, he was really looking for a hen there and Terry had him all fired up. And when he gets on up there, I want y'all to watch him for the next few minutes. I'm not gonna say anything till, uh, till he gets to gobbling. Uh, because I want to tell you one thing before I quit talking on this thing here. A turkey really gets worked up when he starts gobbling every time you yip. Or before you finish calling, he'll gobble. That turkey really wants to see you. And that's really when a turkey's worked up and you're fixing to get a shot at him. So let's listen to the old turkey and Terry do some calling.
This turkey's about 25 yards from Terry right now, just down the hill a little bit. He's behind all that green stuff from him, and he can't shoot him, so it's just uh, it's a waiting game now to see if he'll walk on to his left. The old turkey will and go behind all that brush and everything and walk on out and open it on down the hill. And what you have to do, you, if you've called a lot of turkeys up, you can realize where a turkey can come to you and can't come to you. And you see him circling on down the hill there. He's got to go around that thick stuff to come out so you can get a shot at him. So if you just sit out in the wide open, you're not going to get many shots with a bow. You have to get it in to where you've got that 20 or 25 yard shot or you're just not going to be real successful with a bow when it comes to turkey hunting. Uh, with a gun, you know it's a 35 or 40 yard shot. A lot of people never heard a turkey drum. Y'all listen to this turkey here. It's, a lot of people call it spitting. They go. And that's when he throws his feathers out. You notice Terry's using a bare uh, broad head there with a game stopper on the back of it there. And uh, his bow set at 65 pounds. Notice how good that camouflage blends in with that big old tree there. Notice how that turkey gobbles every time before Terry finishes calling. This is when you know you got a turkey coming to you. This is the only time calling to a turkey that I can tell you I'm fixing to get a turkey up there. When I call and he waits 10 or 15 seconds to gobble, he's telling me to come to him. When he's gobbling, when you're calling, he's coming to you. You notice a hole down in there to the left. That's where Terry's plans on shooting a turkey. If he ever walks through there, he's 20, 22 yards away. Just, it'd be a, a good shot. He's got two openings he can shoot through. One's on pass that, and the next opening, if he can't draw there, if he can't get his bow back. So it's all a, it's all a waiting game to see what's gonna happen here. Terry's starting his draw. He's seen the old turkey starting to move through the bushes there, and he wants to get it drawn back just before the turkey gets there. He starts his draw just the second he sees him, and he knows he's behind a few bushes. He gets it drawn back and lets the turkey come on out and open him. He's trying to pick the right pin out. He, he shoots pins just like I do. He's got one set at 12 yards and one set at 20 yards, and he knows the turkey's 20 to 22 yards away, so he's just watching here, waiting to try to get a shot in the back. That's the best shot you can shoot a turkey with a bow, is shoot him in the back. If you can break his back, you got him. If you go under the back, you generally go through the liver and all, because his heart's not any bigger than your thumb, so that makes it tough. The old turkey's walking on away from him. He hit him in the back, but he hit him just a little low. The old turkey's run. I'm trying to see what's going on there, and Terry breaks and run. I, I thought the turkey stopped right there, but the old turkey run off, so Terry takes off after him. Terry's like a ridge runner anyway. He can run wide open, and uh, I don't really like that running real fast. But uh, when you shoot a turkey like that and they don't leave any blood trail, you got to get to them and try to keep them in sight the best you can. Generally, they'll run out there 100 yards or so and squat. I've shot 41 with a bow, and I've shot through 11 that got away. If the arrow goes clean through them, they seem to get away. Uh, I don't know why. I guess it's because it's such a little kill oh, oh, But uh, oh, if air stays in them, you nearly get them all. Okay. okay, shoot. Get to him, get to him. I always, when I shoot an animal, I get to him as quick as I can, especially a turkey or something that's as little as he is. I like to get there and get him down on the ground and put my foot on his head unless he's already dead. And uh, this old turkey run over under the edge of that treetop. Are they bad about hiding, running up in treetops? Or if there's a little creek bottom there, or in the south they call them branch bottoms, they'll run up under that holler ground up under there and hide under there and squat. So the old turkey here, he uh, he run up there and hid under that treetop there. And uh, 
uh, really didn't need to shoot him again, but we shot him anyway to make sure that uh, he wasn't going to get up and run off. Uh, first time me and Terry ever went bow hunting for turkey, we went to Nebraska, and he killed one the first evening that weighed 22 and a half pounds, and uh, uh, I killed a Jake. I didn't get an old Tom out there with my bow, but uh, we had a lot of fun chasing him. I think I shot it four more I didn't hit, so you... We're going to make a video one day of all the bloobs we make. I mean, all the misses we make, we're going to put them on like these baseball stars are doing now and the football stars. We're going to have all the hunting misses and falling out of tree stands and other little things that we do. Folks, you know, I've been real lucky getting a turkey hunt all over the United States like I have. And three years ago, I started applying for a turkey permit in the state of Michigan. You see, Michigan's on a drawing, and that means that you've got to put an application in early in the, in the first of the year and try to get drawn to get a permit to actually hunt turkeys. They issue uh, 18,000 turkey permits in the state of Michigan, and I've got to say that the Michigan Conservation Department has probably done one of the best jobs on managing turkeys in the whole United States. I use a, a super hen turkey call. I really like a super hen to do a little calling on, and I've got my bow set up, and I always start calling when I first sit down. That's one of the first things I do. I've got on some... Uh, Tink's camo makeup, and I'm using a release there. And if you notice my, my bow there, I've got that shooting hole where I can draw right through it, and I'm checking it out to make sure that everything works fine because on a turkey before this, see, you, you folks not getting to see all the misses we made. I mean, we made lots of misses. One of them I reached up and started to draw my arrow back through the hole there, and I caught the blind and pulled the blind down on top of me. That's a real good one. Uh, we've seen lots of turkeys while we was up there, and I called up a lot of big turkeys, old turkeys, and... Uh, I never seen turkeys that's not hunted very much, quite as alert as some of these was, and I made a, a, a real long shot, uh, several of them. In fact, this one here was about uh, 35 yards. He was a long ways, and I, I hit the turkey, which was a miracle, but uh, since Bear gives me errors and so forth, I can shoot as much as I want to, but I hit the turkey through the top of the back, and he, he went out through this beaver pond here, and... Uh, if you notice there, I'm trying to get him. He's all wet and everything. Uh, turkey had a 12 and a half inch beard, one of the longest beards I ever killed on a turkey. And uh, I just broke his back there. And you can see the hole that bear razor had done in his back there. It cut a hole looked like big as your fist. I've never seen one cut like it. And it broke his back. That's the reason he was jumping like he was. There goes Squirrel running. I had everything around me running. I reckon they all thought I was going to shoot him. Uh, but squirrel season wasn't in there, I would have shot him. But I want you to look at what a beard on that turkey. Turkey weighed 17 and a half pounds. He wasn't uh, a real big turkey like some turkeys I've killed, but he looks like he's drowned in that water. But I had a great time hunting in Michigan this year, and the Michigan Conservation Department's done a super job. Folks, I'm Ben Lee, and I'm running the camera this afternoon along with Wes Morgan, and we're going along with a friend of ours, Don Bell. You've seen Don earlier in the video with Terry Rom. Terry giving Don some tips on how to call turkeys and to hunt turkeys, and Don's hunted with me plenty of times, and uh, Don's hunting a real grand turkey, which he's after his, uh, his second one. He's already killed one with Terry, and he's after his second one. Now, there goes a rabbit. Wes is filming a rabbit. When you sit out there for two or three hours at a time trying to to get a turkey or deer, any kind of wildlife that comes along, you're going to film it. It's a lot of fun. Now, Don's been calling here about 20 to 30 minutes, and he's using a wood to make a turkey call because you can gobble on it, you can do the hen yep, the cuts and everything, and, and old time turkey started way off down on the creek bottom there coming towards him, and uh, I've taught Don, and so has Terry, uh, that you do a lot of calling to a turkey. You don't just call to him once or twice. Once you get him worked up, you keep right on talking to him, you get him up there real close, and the only time you shut up is when you want that gobbler to find you. And as you notice right here, that's a beautiful time there, and he's walking out in the opening, and he's uh, about 60 yards from Don coming up there, this, this little open green field on this creek bottom here, and Don's done seen him, and he's easing his gun up. Now, this is when the action's fixed to start. This is one thing I want to tell you. As a, as a hunter myself, I've done this bunches of time. As you see the old gobbler walking out and Don's back in the shadows here, I want you to watch what's fixing to happen at 25 yards. Don completely misses a turkey and he takes off running and flying and Don shoots him on the third shot and knocks him down. Well, he's running to him to make sure the old turkey don't jump up and run and fly again and puts his foot on his head. That's the first thing you always want to do when you get to a turkey. Make sure you put your foot on his head because he's liable to, uh, to spur you if you try to pick him up. So Don's got his foot on his head waiting for the old turkey to 
to give up the ghost there, and he's, uh, he's flopping all over him, you know. He's just about done for, though, you know. It was a real good shot there on the third shot. Winchester loves people like Don that shoots a lot, and I do the same thing. But if you notice the old big turkey here, there's nothing like hunting uh, the wild turkeys across the United States. You know, we got all these four different species, and, and Don there was successful today because he learned some tips from, from us. He learned how to use a Widowmaker turkey call. He learned how to gobble on it and to call on it. We'd heard turkeys that morning, and he went back in and built him a blind down next to the creek bottom there where there was a good strut near. And he took and done a lot of practice on his Widowmaker turkey call before he went hunting. So the next time you're going to go turkey hunting, get you a turkey call and practice a bunch on it. You know, folks, it's really great that you get an opportunity to go to these turkey conventions and so forth and get invited to go on some really great turkey hunting places. This is a, a Wilson Arch lease out of Temple, Texas, and it's really managed for white-tailed deer and turkeys, and it's some of the best I've ever seen in the United States there. If you notice, this is one of the uh, watering troughs here that they have for uh, uh, cows and for sheep and for goats, and uh, there's one of the holding tanks there, and if you notice that tree right there, there's only two or three of them, and that's the turkey roost trees right here in this, in this valley here. And there's a windmill. It's just old scrub oaks and uh, live oaks. And there's not many trees for them to, uh, to roost in. And there are turkeys literally everywhere out here. Everywhere you find a windmill or a watering hole and a few trees, you're going to find turkeys. You can't call too much when you're calling the turkeys anyway. And uh, I got my bow release on there. And I just sit there, you know. And every now and then a hen would come by or something. And we had some gobblers to come by, but they was out of range. And uh, we did get me uh, missing one on film. We're not showing it, but I did miss a big one. Uh, but here goes a hen right here walking by at about uh, 25 yards. And uh, she couldn't even tell I was there, you see. And uh, I let her pay somebody, and I'd start calling again. Uh, seen turkeys uh, way off at a distance, lots of them. There's two gobblers strutting right there. Uh, at one time, I think uh, I was looking at five or six gobblers off in a distance out my blind there. Uh, coming down that water hole, every one of them come down there every morning about 10, 11 o'clock all day and so forth. I want you to look at here now. <coughs> this is a Texas jackrabbit, and this is the most unique footage you've ever seen. I want you to watch these two rabbits. I know you folks have heard the old saying about being pissed off. Well, I want you to watch that right there. That rabbit peed on that other rabbit. We're going to show it to you in slow motion in a minute. That's the most unbelievable footage I've ever seen in my life. Terry Rahm was running the camera. Look at that rabbit shaking his head, trying to get that stuff off his ears. I'd shake mine, too, if it was me. But them rabbits come out there going that water hole. I ain't never seen nothing like that. And, uh, in fact, Terry got to laughing so hard, we like, we like to run the turkeys off. You notice me, how I'm sitting there. I'm just waiting. I got my uh, release hooked up on the string. I got my bow ready. I got the camo makeup on. I got everything I can get on, and it's just a waiting game. Uh, this particular... Uh, a morning, I think I've been in the blind about two and a half hours, and uh, what keeps you there is hearing these doggone turkeys off at a distance gobbling and answering you, but there's so many of them that you don't never know if one's coming or not. That's the bad part about it. Uh, you, you At times, you hear 15, 20 turkeys down there in South Texas. There's nowhere in the world that's got turkey hunting like South Texas. South Texas for, for the Rio Grande turkey, and then Missouri for the eastern turkey is the two best it is in the whole United States. There's just no place has turkeys gobbling like these two places do. And finally, one of these old turkeys makes his mind up and starts coming on down there. Uh, Terry had the camera on there. You notice me hunkering down. I can tell he's coming because I can see him through the edge of that blind off out there at about 20 yards. And uh, I draw on him. He's walking. I had to make a bad shot. I hit him right over his uh, uh, back legs up through the uh, right of what people call a, the short leg of a chicken or a turkey is where I hit him, and it went right through there. I hit him in the back end, really, if you want to know the truth that's what you call a texas heart shot anyway and uh i shot feathers out of them everywhere there uh one reason i'd set up or notice that place on the dirt there that's what you call a dusting place them turkeys have been dusting there every day them hens had and they nesting close by when they do that and they come out there and uh and dust herself to get mites i guess and ticks and and other insects off their body well i shot all the feathers out of him there and uh he went running off out through the woods there i didn't figure he was gonna go too far because it I mean, I hit him good. I could hear him flopping as he was running out through there. And I'm just walking along there, trailing him, seeing what I can do. You know, uh, you won't find much blood out of turkeys. I've shot lots of them with a bow. And uh, nearly all of them, if the arrow stays in, I recover. Most of them, if the arrow goes through, I don't. That's the reason you want to use a game stopper anytime you're turkey hunting. And you don't need that bow set on 
75, 80 pounds. 55 pounds is perfect for turkeys because the arrow won't go through and through them, and you got a lot better opportunity of, of getting one. Notice old turkey there. He's a uh, he'd give up the ghost there and run there in the bushes and fail dead. Uh, uh, I didn't. I don't guess he went 75 yards. But if you get up and you and you push one when they run like that, uh, if they ever get up and fly, you won't never find them because I've lost uh, the ones I've lost. I never did find them because they flew off. And then. Uh, Folks, we're back down here in Texas on Wilson Arts lease, and we're uh, we're out there in the field with a good friend of mine up in Tennessee, old Joe Woods and Terry Rahm and Don Bell. And there's 64 different uh, uh, stock ponds on this on Wilson Arts lease, and we just go to uh, about 100 to 200 yards from each one of these stock ponds, and we get out and start calling and face a turkey around there. They'll start gobbling, and when they do, we come in with the cameras and set up as close as we can and try to get across from the uh, uh, pond from where the turkeys are and try to call them around the pond. If you notice, sir, I've got Joe there sitting up in front of me, and uh, I'm sitting down there, and Terry Rahm's running the camera, and you can see the lake down there in front of us. And uh, the old turkey's off down in there a pretty good way. He's gobbling, and it's uh, about 2 o'clock in the daytime. It's on way on over in the middle of the day, and uh, we got the old turkey to gobble, though, and uh, you can hear him gobbling in the background there. Uh, between myself and Terry, we're working on this one now. And this turkey does something a lot that you don't see happen a lot. I've had turkeys to run to me. I've had them to fly to me. I've had them to run across. So look at this one running towards Joe here. Get him, Joe. And Joe finally hit one after all these don't misses do he's done. And uh, let's just watch what happens here. turkey here is about oh 90 95 100 yards away down this creek bottom here and we'd heard him gobbling we'd ease in there and set up on him trying to get it you notice uh, there's one thing about a wild turkey the old head be just as white as it can be and there's just no color like that there eastern wild turkey how bright they are and how brown they are and so forth and uh, this old turkey's picking gravel you know they have to have gravel to digest their food that goes in their gizzard and it grinds up their food you know they really don't have a a digestive track like we do and this old turkey there's picking him some gravel and just easing on down the creek bed there notice how i got this bank here and i'm in as close as i can get and i'm not moving i'm trying to be as still as i can and the old turkey there as he's walking i wait till he goes behind that tree right there in front of me he does i draw the second he goes behind it and uh about a 20 yard shot it ain't very far and i hit him real good and uh he goes right down broke his back there and uh, that's what turkey hunting's about. I mean, uh, there ain't no way to uh, tell you uh, you're going to get some chances you'll get to draw on them. Some of them you won't get to draw on them if everything goes all right. And uh, if you let him walk past you, though, if you use a big rock or uh, get out in an old treetop or somewhere and let the turkey walk past you and use a decoy, you've got a lot better chance of getting a turkey the next time you're out there hunting. Challenge the buck for his dominance. Make him fighting mad. Make him come to you to defend his dominance with Ben Lee Dominant Buck Urine. Field tested and proven to be one of the best dominant buck attractants today. Deer research at a leading university in the southeast has proven that a dominant buck will defend his status when challenged. Ben Lee's Dominant Buck Urine, proven to be effective. From Wellington Outdoors, makers of tanks and Ben Lee hunting products.